Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to work on drag and drop for our inventory system. This is going to be a pretty big thing because it requires a lot of things to work together. So we have to figure this out ahead of time before we go in just writing code and see if it happens. So what I've done is I made a really short list to show kind of what we need, just the, the very basics of what we need. And then we'll flesh it out from there a bit. So things we'll need. Item object needs to know what the item actually is. We can do this by updating the item data with the data. It may not make sense, but we have an item field in the item data class right now, but it doesn't have any information. We've not set it to be anything yet. So we need to make sure we do that so that each item object, like the actual physical object in the game world, knows what item it is. That's important. Item data itself will be responsible for handling the dragging of items. This means it will need to know exactly which slot its item is in. So each uh, item data object will have to have a slot location field. This it's simple ID, so like if uh, this item is in slot 7, then item data slot will be equal to 7. So we know which slot each item is in, just in case we have to, which we will, have to swap out items if we drag and drop to another item or if we have to remove the item from that slot say we delete the item when we drag it somewhere else or if something else just happens you never know so we need to know which slot that item came from so we can do something with it if we have to next item data will have to have the uh, unity events system implemented so we can use some of the events from that and for that we'll have to also implement the actual interfaces for those events which is like uh when we begin a drag, we need to know when we begin that drag. When we are dragging, we need to know that we are dragging. When we end a drag, and so on. We need to know those events so we can do different things depending on which event is firing. Next thing we need to do is attach a slot class to each slot object we have. And this will be responsible for um, managing the dropping of items. So if we drag an item from slot one to slot seven slot seven is gonna be like oh you dropped an item on me let me see if i have an item if i do i'll send the item i have back to the first slot the, the one you took that item from and i'll now set the item that i currently have to be equal to the item that you dropped on me if there's not an item in my slot what i'll do is just add the item you dropped on me there and i'll make sure i delete the item that you dropped on me from the item that it came or from the slot that it came from that way it's kind of like a drag and drop and by doing this, we need to make sure that we're also updating the inventory item list in the back end. So this is great for the front end. You can see it happening. Also need to make sure we're updating the back end inventory list. So if we query items, we don't get uh, messed up IDs and stuff. That's pretty much it. It's going to be a bit more than that uh, when we write it out, but that's kind of like a skeleton to follow. So first thing, let's see if we can get this simple dragging working. We don't need to do anything right now, but drag an item from a slot and see what we can do with that. So the first thing I want to do is I want to set item to be equal to the item that is in this slot. And to do that, we'll go to inventory. We'll go to where we add right here, where we add items to the inventory. And I'll just pick a spot here that makes sense. Uh, let's see, so we're instantiating the object there. When I do that, that'd be a good place to set the item of that um, item data to be equal to the item that we're adding. So I'll do item object. And we might cache these later on in a different way because we are doing a lot of calls here. We'll figure out what we're calling a lot and see what we need to cache though. So I'm going to do item object dot. I see it's the object. So we need to get component off of that. Grab the item data component off of that. I believe that's the one that has the item data component. I need to grab the item field from that and set it to be equal to the item to add. So the item that we're adding is going to be item to add. And I'm going to set the item of the item that we added to be equal to the item to add. Sounds confusing, but what that's doing is it's setting the item data item to be equal to that item. So now if I go to the item data of each inventory item, it knows what item it is. And it needs to be self-aware, so that's good. So now that I have that information, what I can do is we can come in here and start our event. So we're going to be using Unity Engine dot event systems. This will give us the events for the UI that we need. So to do this, we're going to implement a couple of interfaces. The first one being I, let's see, it's going to be I on, let's see, begin drag. Yeah. <laughs> on begin drag handler, I want I on drag or uh, see drag handler and I 
end drag handler. This event here that this interface represents will fire when uh, the drag begins, while dragging this will be firing, and when the drag ends. Pretty straightforward. But you notice we're getting a red squiggly. That means there's something wrong with these things. What is wrong here? Well, if you don't know what an interface is, well, that means what an interface is, is it's saying, look, th what you implemented says that you will have something in this class. You're implementing the I begin drag handler to the item data. Begin drag handler has things that are required for each class that implements it. It's a contract. If you've heard that described before, I'm sure whenever you implement this, you're signing the agreement to implement everything that it agreed or that it has for you to implement. So this has a method for us to implement, and that will be easy to go to quick actions when I right click on that and implement on begin drag. That is the method that this interface requires us to have. We agreed to have it. We have to have it. Each of these have their own methods. I can do the same thing and it will add that for me just like that. So now we have, we meet the requirements for these interfaces and we can work with these events now. Pretty cool. The first thing we'll do is on begin drag will not handle the dragging of the item, but it will handle what happens when you start to drag the item. So the first thing we have to do is make sure that the slot that we are on contains an item. If it doesn't, there's no reason to fire this event anyway. We don't care because there's no item to drag. So make sure item is not equal to null. Because if it is equal to null, there's not an item here because we set it to equal to something when we add an item to the slot. Pretty simple. So if there is an item and we're beginning to drag, what do we do? So the first thing we can do is we can set the position of that item to be equal to the mouse position. And that's how dragging works, right? So we're going to take the item and we're going to say its position matches the pointer position because that's how it's going to drag it from point A to point B. And begin drag is the starting point for that. So I'm going to do that by saying this, which is a reference to this item data, this instance of this object, dot transform, perhaps transform component, dot position is equal to, and we're going to set this to be equal to event data because that is, as you notice here, an argument it passed in. It's a parameter for on begin drag. Each of these events will have that. This will give us the data for that event. There's the event data, and there's a few things in here we can work with. Quite a few things actually, but we need position. We need the position of the event data, and this is going to pass it the mouse position. It's going to be a vector two, very simple x and y. So we can set this position to be equal to that position. Now we can see if we have anything by doing that. Let's go ahead and go into Unity real quick. I'm going to click play. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to click and drag. Okay, so you notice what happened there. I keep doing that. I want to click and oh, it through an error. Okay, yeah, I don't need to be throwing these exceptions. All right, so I'm going to click and drag. Oh, not up there, click and drag. And notice it moves one time on the single frame that I drag it on. When I begin the drag, it moves to the mouse position, but that's it because all I'm doing is moving it on begin drag. So that's working. It's snapping it to the position it should be in, but we need to also do that each frame. Now, you could just do this on drag and not on begin drag and that would probably give you the same effect but I want to make sure right when I begin dragging it snaps that to the right position but you'll notice that when I click and drag it snaps it to the center of the item that is going to be the center position for that so it's snapping the center of that to the actual mouse position which makes sense so we can change that with a simple offset in a second to make it look like we're dragging from the point we clicked on It'd be a pretty cool pretty cool thing so Back in Visual Studio, this is working as you would expect. So what I want to do is I could just copy this and I can paste it right there and say on drag, which is going to be firing while we're dragging it. If the item is unequal to null, we're going to do uh, we're going to move the position to be equal to the mouse position each frame. So let's see how that does. Go back into Unity, play. Okay, I want to click and drag. Okay, so it's working how you would expect. I click anywhere on the item and drag, it snaps it to the center. And as I'm moving it, it follows the mouse. You'll notice that it's rendering under the slots that get uh, placed after the item gets placed. So in the hierarchy here, you can see the item slot is here and the slots that are below it get drawn afterwards. Things that are on the bottom get drawn on screen 
on top. That's that ordering of the sprites work. So we can fix that. The way I'm going to fix it is I'm going to, uh, when I drag an item, I'm going to set its parent to be equal to the actual slot panel and not the actual slot. That way it'll add it to the slot panel at the bottom while I'm dragging it. And when I add it to a slot or when I, when I reset the drag or drop it in a slot, I'll add it to be equal to the, the parent of the item but equal to the slot that it got set as. So it'll be back in the slot like it should be, but while I'm dragging it, it won't be a, a child of a single slot. That'll fix the drawing order, and it'll make sense in the actual inventory that we don't uh, keep it in a parent while we're dragging it outside of the parent. That'd be weird. So that's a way to fix two things at once, and it kind of uh, the simple thing to do. To fix that real quick, what I would do is I would say on begin drag, very simply here, I would say this.transform.set parent. And I want to set the parent to be equal to the slot panel. But we don't know where the slot panel is. We don't have a reference to that. We could just grab a reference to the slot panel. We could do it that way. It'd be less confusing probably. But what I want to do is I could say for now, for this second, I could say this dot transform dot parent, which would be the parent of this item, which would be that actual slot. And then I can say the parent of that parent. And that would be the slot panel. So we can do that for now, but what that's going to do is that's going to keep setting the parent up one each time we drag. And that doesn't make sense, but what I'll do is on begin drag, I'll do that. And uh, on end drag, which is going to be right here, when I stop dragging, what I could do is set this back to be the original parent. Which would be confusing if we don't know the original parent. So for now, I'll show you what will happen if I don't do that. Go back into Unity, I'm going to click play. So if I don't set it back to the original parent and I keep setting it to this uh, uh, transform.parent.parent, I'll drag it once. Notice it snapped out of the slot itself and went down into the slot panel at the very bottom. So it gets drawn on top of everything. It's large now because it's not restricted by the layout, but it's, it's getting drawn on top of these slots, which is good. But I'll drop it and then I'll drag it again. Notice it moved out one more time. Now it's in the inventory panel. Do it again. Now it's in the canvas panel or the canvas object. Do it again, and it disappears because it's out here, not in the, uh, not on the canvas. So that's an issue, right? So we need to cache the parent of the item, or we could just get a reference to the slot panel. But we'll just cache it in an object and save it for later. So to do that, we'll set up a. Let's see, we'll make it a transform because a parent has to be a transform, it's a transform component. And I'll call it original parent. And what I can do is when I start dragging, I could just set original parent to be equal to this dot transform uh, dot parent. That'll give us the parent current, the current parent, current parent. And when I stop dragging, what I'll do is I'll just set the parent back to the original parent. So I'll say this dot transform dot set parent is equal to original parent. And that'll set it back to the original parent. So we check that real quick. I'm going to click and drag. You saw a thing there that happened, which is fine. We'll fix that in a second. But when I click and drag, it removes it. <laughs> it flashes down here because it's adding it into the... It's following the layout. When I change the uh, parent, it follows the layout for a second and it snaps to my mouse. We can make it ignore the layout and it'll fix that. So it also fix the sizing problem, I'm sure. So notice now the object is the child of slot panel, which is what we want. When I let go, it goes back to the slot that I dragged it from. So that's good. Do it again. It doesn't freak out. It doesn't get broken and goes outside the canvas. It stays in the slot panel and then back in the item. That's great. So you'll notice now this is big, <laughs> bigger than it should be, it's bigger than the slot actually. And it pops down there. So let's fix that real quick by hopefully ignoring the layout for the item object. So we have item, which contains uh, this text. That doesn't matter. So on item, what I'll do is I'll go add component. And I will add a, a layout element. And this component allows us to do a few things that are, that's pretty helpful in a lot of situations. But in this situation, all I'll do is I'll just say ignore the layout of its parents. I don't want to follow any layout. When I do that, it'll remain the same size and hopefully it won't flow with the grid and pop out down here. That's the idea, so let's click play. 
I want to click and drag. Okay, so both things were fixed. It did not pop down here into the uh, grid, and it just uh, stayed the same size. All right, so it's snapping to the center of the icon, which isn't a bad thing. A lot of inventory systems do that, but I don't like that. I want it to drag from the point I click on. So to do that, I'll set up a simple vector offset, and I'll explain it as we go. So I'm going to do a vector 2. It's going to be an X and a Y, simple X and Y. I'm going to call it uh, simple offset. Yeah, offset work. And now offset is going to be set to the difference between the position of the icon and the position of the mouse. So if we're at 40, 40, uh, the icon's at 40, 40, and the mouse is at... 25 25 we're going to subtract the position of the item from the position of the mouse so we're going to get see 25 minus negative minus 40 be negative 15 so we're going to offset the mouse or the icon by negative 15 on the x and the y because both of the values are the same for some reason but it will be offset negative 15 on x and y matching it to the position that the mouse clicked on and that'll make sense i think if i do it real quick for you so offset Whenever we begin drag, we're going to calculate the offset is equal to we're going to grab the event data, going to get the uh, position. And like I said, we're going to subtract the so you have the mass position, subtract the icon position or the item position from that. So this dot transform dot position you would think would work, but it's a vector three and we're subtracting it from or subtracting a vector two. So the issue there is we need to convert this to a vector two. Quickest way to do that for me would be a, a new vector two, and I would do a so make a new vector two, pass the this dot transform dot position dot x for the first value, and get the position dot y for the next value. So there's your x and your y for the vector two. Ignore the z, and subtract it from the event data dot position. That'll give us the offset. And what I can do now is say this dot transform dot position minus the offset so subtract that from the actual position that we're calculating and that'll give us the offset of the icon and might as well do that on the uh, begin drag as well let's see how that looks real quick click and drag from there and it works as you would expect. So where you click and you drag, it follows right along. You notice a slight second where it doesn't it doesn't start dragging. That's because the begin drag doesn't start until I'm guessing you're a certain distance away. That makes sense because it's not really a drag until you're dragging. It doesn't know you're dragging until you're a distance away from it. You click and you go a distance away. So it takes it a second to understand, oh, he's dragging. So let's call that event and do what we're supposed to do when we drag. 